In a recent video about water transport in trees, we described a phenomenon called capillary action. As the size of the capillary tube decreases, the higher the liquid rises in the tube. With a wide tube, like the size of a test tube, the rise is negligible. But why is this? What are the forces at work? That's what we want to look at today. Let's break it down into its parts. First, there is an upward force caused by adhesion between the liquid, let's say water, and the sides of the glass tube. Adhesion comes about because of the interaction between the water molecules and the silica in the glass, which creates an attractive force pulling the water up the sides of the wall. Adhesion creates a meniscus at the sides of the glass tube. There is also the downward force of water in the column due to gravity. The downward force equals the mass of the water column times the gravitational constant. The mass of the water will be the volume times the density given by the Greek letter rho. The volume of a column is pi r squared times the height h, so the overall downward force will be pi r squared times h times rho times g. The upward force has to be proportional to the circumference of the circle at the meniscus, 2 pi r, times some adhesive force constant, let's call it A for now, which represents the attraction between the liquid molecules and the material of the tube. At equilibrium, these two forces are equal. Right away, we see something interesting. Both the upward and downward forces increase with increasing radius of the tube. But, as the tube gets bigger, the downward force increases with the square of r, whereas the upward force increases as r to the first power. So, as the tube gets bigger, the weight of the water in the column exceeds the upward force. If we solve for the height, we get h equals 2a over rho gr. We've derived an equation that you won't find in a textbook, but it does resemble a well-established equation known as Juren's law. Juren's law states that the height of a liquid in a capillary tube is inversely proportional to the radius of the tube. Here, our adhesive constant A is expressed as measurable quantities. Gamma, the surface tension of the liquid, which is a constant for a given liquid at a given temperature, and represents the cohesive forces between the liquid molecules. The other factor is cosine theta. Theta is the contact angle that the meniscus forms along the side of the tube. The contact angle depends on the liquid and the tube material, for example, water and glass. As the adhesion of the liquid to the tube increases, the angle theta gets smaller and cosine theta approaches 1. If the adhesion of the liquid were very low, the angle theta approaches 90 degrees and cosine theta approaches 0. Juren's law has been validated in hundreds of experiments and forms a cornerstone of hydrodynamics and microfluidics, the study of the behavior of fluids at small scale. Juren's law is not limited to water. It can be observed in other liquids too, even mercury. When a glass tube is placed in mercury, the meniscus is actually below the level in the reservoir. This comes about because mercury has no adhesion to the glass. The meniscus is convex instead of concave like with water. Mercury has high cohesion, that is, the mercury atoms interact strongly with each other, creating high surface tension. With theta now greater than 90 degrees, cosine theta is negative, making height h a negative value also. We hope this video has provided some insight into the factors that go into capillary action. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Science Sketch.